Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Talking Halos. I'm your host today, Jared Timms, and I am joined alongside my co-host, my partner in crime, Nate Green. Nate, how you doing? I'm doing good, Jared. Good to be here. How are you? Well, you know, if you're uh, if you're in, you're a normal Angels fan, you're freaking out right now. If uh, if you you're not you and I, you understand that it's uh, just quarter one of the NFL season. Part of the process. Part of the process. You got you got my uh, analogy there to the NFL season. Oh, of course. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, um, yeah, you know, we got uh, opening day happened. I do apologize. Just ahead of just we're trying to still figure out what this in season is going to look like for all of us. The game plan off the bat, and I'll say it right now, the game plan off the bat is going to be a preview slash slash go over the previous series podcast. What is go over? What is a better word for that? Review. Review. That's a good one. That's a good word. Words are tough today. Um, yeah, preview slash review podcast, uh, YouTube episode of the previous series, and then preview, of course, the upcoming series. That's not going to happen for this one, unfortunately. We will review the Astros series. Um, we're recording this the day of game one of the Miami series. So Wednesday, a a review podcast will come out. Um, so look forward for that. And then along the way, we'll also have you know, guests come on the show. We'll have um, random podcasts thrown in there as well. So still three podcasts a week. We'll try to figure out, you know, certain days of when we can do things, when we, when good times are, we might have more than three podcasts a week. We might have, um, we won't have less. We'll have at least three. So just a heads up on all that. So guys, as always, if you could subscribe to this podcast, wherever you're listening to it or watching us hit that bell. Uh, if you are watching us on YouTube, I think that's a thing that they do um on the youtube that we're doing hello youtube um if you're just what if you're just listening subscribe wherever you're listening to us uh you can follow us on all of our social medias twitter instagram and facebook in fact i'm gonna throw this out there right now uh, any of you listeners um want to contact us i'll let you run our account i'm not even gonna lie like if you want to help us out um and I don't know, put it on your resume or something. You have some young, you have some young uh, listeners, young watchers of this podcast and want to learn a little bit about social media um, marketing and such like that. Because I mean, background behind myself, I do have a master's degree in marketing. I have my bachelor's in marketing. I know a thing or two about marketing. If you want to learn about it, you know, hit me up. I'm more than happy to let you guys run our accounts um, just because it's very difficult for me to uh, get everything out there. And I want to grow this this talking halos as much as I can. So if you'd like to, or if you know somebody that might want to hit me up, I'm more than happy to, to see if you might fit the mold. Um, super weird that I'm just kind of throwing that out there now. I should have yep. thrown it out there a long time ago, but, uh, but yeah, you know, if you, if you want to do it, you know, come on, uh, we, we need some help more than happy to more than happy to do that for you guys. You can follow myself on Twitter at Jared underscore Tim's. You can follow Nate at Nate Green 34. So Nate, uh, we got to get this going. We got to get this started off with how worried are you? Are you actually that worried about this team? I know you're not because we've already been not, talking about this, but uh, yeah, no, go not ahead. at all. Go We're ahead. on pace. We are on pace. Uh, I said 82 and 80. I'm not worried at all. Um, I, I think they played well. Uh, obviously, the, the big question marks came up, and you know, they're even bigger question marks right now. And I know earlier I, I was saying the lineup is not as good as we think. And so far, that is what it looks like the lineup is very very shallow it is very top heavy you know three three hitters that, that are swinging it and they're not even swinging it right now but I'm not really worried about that they will continue they will figure it out um but yes yeah, so this team is going to be fine they started with one of the toughest opponents in the American League uh it just so happens to be that Jeremy Pena wanted to play out of his mind and show that he could win rookie of the year that is an overreaction Monday Oh, overreaction Monday. Thank you, Pat McAfee. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, when you get down to it, I thought I thought the Angels matched up with Houston very well on all aspects, basically, of um, of the baseball minus one aspect, and that would be preparation. At the end of the day, I thought that the Astros were more prepared, and I don't mean like that the Astros went out and practiced more. I didn't think the Astros you know, were better than the Angels. I thought that they were better behind the scenes, meaning I thought they had a better, probably had a better scattering report. They probably done their due diligence a lot better. They probably have a better analytical team. Um, and I think that's 
at the end of the day where the angels are, are going to get hurt at uh, when it, when it's all said and done. Cause I thought the angels matched up very well against, against Houston, I, you know, four game series and, and, you know, take away what you want from it at the end of the day. But, um, but I thought the angels pitched, uh, pitched just as well as the Astros did um, uh, starting pitching wise. I know that there were some uncharacteristic bullpen uh, pieces that didn't do well. We saw the two home runs by Tepera in the, in the first game, which were, which were unfortunate. I have what two home runs on two pitches, basically um, back-to-back pitches. It felt like um, uncharacteristic of Tapera. Uh, and then, you know, we saw it in game two where everything just kind of fell apart um, to be expected though, when your starter only goes four innings. Uh, but at the end of the day, you got to figure out how to get from the fourth inning to the seventh inning without giving up too many runs. So you can get to the back of that bullpen and hope that the offense does their thing. So and um, and when you look at it on the offensive side of things, I thought the Angels again matched up fairly well with uh, with Houston. I think they I think they hit pretty well against Houston. Mm-hmm. And, and I know I, I didn't think the, I didn't their, like their up. runs. Came, their runs came in in you know obvious spots. You know, down big thirteen to two. Let's make it thirteen to six. The game looks a lot closer than it actually is. A Jack Mayfield um, home run in the second inning. I mean, yeah. So yeah, they they didn't really score all weekend. I know they had the six runs in in game two, like we mentioned, and that was kind of the Astros were like, eh, just kind of finish this thing off. We don't really care. We're gonna win this game no matter what. Um, I do think they struggled offensively. I think Houston showed that they are an offensive, like they are offense to be reckoned with in the American League. I think you saw Kyle T- Kyle Tucker hit a couple bombs. You saw Jeremy Pena, the rookie, who everyone had question marks about going into the season. He answered a lot of question marks early. Um, they they didn't even have Yearly Guriel, who you know nobody likes, but he he still ranks somehow. Um, so yeah, they were missing some pieces, and I, I think the Astros out out offense the Angels or out slug the Angels. Um, I think that was one thing. The other thing that that I'll mention is the Astros went deeper into the game earlier with starting pitchers, which made it easier for their bullpen later in the series. That is always going to be my question mark with the Angels starting pitching. Can they go deep enough into games to make it easy on the relievers? Because, I mean, for Amber Valdez going six and two-thirds in his first outing, that set up the Astros for the rest of the series. Uh, absolutely. I mean, when you when you take Shohei Otani out after four and a third, 75 pitches, whatever it is, um, you know, and then you take Reed Detmers out after four, uh, Syndergaard went deep, which was huge. What do you go, six? Five, five and, and a third. third. Five and a third. That's deeper than everybody else. I'll yeah. take it. Um, and then when, you know, Jose Suarez can't throw a strike, so it was a 50% strike rate on Sunday. Um, that's not the recipe for success, you know. But I did think, again, I did think that the Angels matched up well uh, well against them. I thought the Angels, the starters, pitched well. Um, minus a few hiccups, you know, I thought going deeper into games. But this team, this 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 rotation isn't meant to go deep into games, and we, we know that. Um, which is scary. Know, which is like, scary, yeah, um, on a bullpen that, look like it did there are going to be weeks like this and there's going to be there's going to be weeks where the angels starting pitching looks like some of the best in baseball <laughs> i think too um else I'll, i want to you know come back around to it as well you know I, I just think that beyond the game the the game being played off the field is so much better by the houston astros i think that's where the angels are going to suffer this year is the preparation side of things the advanced scouting um, I know they added Ben Rowan or to that type of role of like an advanced scout, um, but I, I, it's just tough at the end of the day. I think that's where they're going to get beat. And, um, and yeah, you know, I, I, it's tough. It's tough. It really is to, to say the least. I did like how they matched up. I know I've said that like 18 times, but I thought they, I thought they thought they played well. And in the first four games, take it for what it's worth. I think the, I think angel starters are going to start getting deeper into games the next couple times around gets a 90 100 110 pitches whatever that is uh so eh, you yep. put it behind you right yeah i think they're they're probably one more week away from just not having a pitch count i think yeah. maybe one two more times through the rotation pitch count goes away and you know they're gonna let these guys go but it's tough with the starting pitching that they have because most of those guys are, are trying to get strikeouts suarez is trying to get strikeouts otani's trying to get strikeouts um, Detmers is trying to get strikeouts. Thor honestly didn't look like he was trying to punch anybody out. He had one strikeout, didn't he? Yeah. So you you look at the recipe for su- success, and it was 
early contact, soft contact, and you weren't going to be successful. And when you're going to go deep into counts, try and strike out 9, 10, 11, 12 guys or whatever it was, and it was just tough because you had a pitch count. So I think that will, once that goes away, it will change the way the Angels do things. They will be a lot better. And I also think, to answer some questions we've been getting on Twitter, why some of these relievers have been going out for a second inning or haven't been sitting and then going back out, whatever, like finishing an inning and then starting the next one, however you want to say that. I think that is a big, big uh, reason why the pitch count, it it comes from the Angels starting pitchers pitch count. Um, They're trying to get these relievers through, you know, two innings, inning and a third, because they can't just let their starters go four innings and then go one, 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 one the rest of the way. And now they have what four games and used everyone four times. Like that was what they were on pace for. Honestly, like, if they didn't get length out of the bullpen, out like two innings out of a guy and just say, hey, you're done for, for tomorrow, they were going to have to ask him to throw four times in a weekend. And that's very, very tough to ask of guys who had short spring trainings, and you're going to ask them to throw between 50 and 70 times this year. Like, if Tapera throws 65 times this year, I will not be surprised. Well, that's how it was last year, too, when you look at it. And also, I mean, again, at the end of the day, when it comes to, like, the, the preparation side of things, I think that – this is exactly where the angels suffer a lot from. Um, And Joe Madden doesn't help it out. I mean, I don't know if it's Madden. I don't know if it's, you know, the advanced scouting that says this, but you look at some of, and I know we're only a couple games in, but you look at some of the lineups that the angels put out and it was like, why, you know, why is this, why is this happening Uh, in a sense? And, you know, you look at some of the bullpen decisions that were, that were being made, you know, I am not a huge fan and it's been this way from Joe Madden forever. I feel like the the clean inning type of thing, you know, bringing in a bringing in somebody with two outs and a runner on base. It's like, why? Why? I, I don't I don't understand that. And I know we've talked about this before. And Joe Madden wasn't a very good um, bullpen manager in in Chicago. Uh, he probably had it all done for him in Tampa, in a sense like that. Uh, I'm he is the father of analytics when it comes down to it. I think, but. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's where the angels are going to suffer. I think, I think in the bullpen management side of things, and I think in the advanced advanced scouting area. So Nate, I don't know if you have anything else to say about these four games and you know what we have looking, looking forward here in the future. No, I, I think the biggest, biggest takeaway from this series is it's way, way, way too early to press the panic button. I know everyone's already just starting to press the panic button on Joe Adele. Everyone, yeah, everyone's starting to try and press the panic button on, you know, Otani at the plate, Mike Trout at the plate, Rendon at the plate. I mean, I'm already seeing reports, but like I'm already seeing people on Twitter say Mayfield should start over Rendon, and that's just absolutely. I, ridiculous. I saw Rojas starting over Rendon, and I was like, yeah, it's like eh. the, the both of them aren't hitting. Nobody's hitting. Like, if we're gonna be honest, it's pitchers are supposed to dominate early. I know everyone loves to say hitters are supposed to dominate early. Pitchers are supposed to dominate early. Yeah. Hitters don't usually see live pitching until spring training, and it's very hard when guys throw 95, 97, 98. You're going to see the guys who throw really hard have success really early because it's very tough to get timing. So I'm not really worried about what Mike Trout's going to do, what Shohei Otani's going to do at the plate. I think they're going to put up fine numbers. But the the real question mark that, you know, obviously the, the big question marks, like we said, with Walsh and, and Adele and Marsh, are, are those guys going to hit? And, you know, how deep are these pitchers going to get in the games? Are they going to go six, seven innings? Or are we going to have the, the four and two-thirds show every single week where it's, all right, our starters on four and two-thirds. How many relievers can finish this thing off? Because if that's the, if that's the case, it's going to be a long season. Yeah, yeah, I, I, uh, I agree. Again, that's been the question for a while. It comes down to the starting, side, starting pitching side of things. I thought they pitched well, uh, but they do need to get deeper into games. Um, they do at the end of the day and i mean you look at it suarez pitched to a 53 percent strike rate which isn't gonna work you got to get that up that's gonna get you deep into games I, he held them scoreless basically until they took him out that inning and then i think he gave up those two run yep. i those think both those runs were his yes um but uh but yeah i'm not worried i'm not worried at all you shouldn't be worried if you're listening to this podcast at all it's four games into the season if you want to equate it to like an nfl season we've barely reached the 10 minute mark 
of the first quarter and it's like being down a, a bit, being down a field goal. So I, I don't know. That's, that's kind of where I stand. That's a good analogy, right? I don't know about down a field goal, but sure. I think you're down seven. You're down a field goal to the defend down a field goal to Tom Brady. How about that? I think Better? you're down seven, but sure. Okay, fine. Down seven to Tom Brady. Um, yeah, but let's get on to what we're worried about. And I air quote that because what Twitter is worried about. Uh, Joe Dell. Let's talk about him. I mean, started the season off, what, 0 for 8, 6 strikeouts so far. Lackluster defense. Not saying that's the effort, but I'm just saying that the defense that he's been putting out there uh, is is lackluster luster to say the least. Uh, he's throwing the ball to the pitcher's mound from left field. Uh, again, I don't – I. I, you guys want to be honest here. I do, I watched. I I was at the I was at the opening day. I was at opening day, and I was at the second game. Those two games in between, I was out watching uh, out watching high A or low A uh, Inland Empire. So I didn't see those two games. But yeah, I, I um I'm not worried about Joe Adele. That's just end of story there. Um, I am worried about the defense in a sense. It's something that we've seen in the past. I think that that yeah, I I do think that that's going to be an issue. We made a nice catch on Sunday, uh, robbing. I, I don't know what the I route what the route I was going to know what the route efficiency was, but he made the catch. That's all that matters. Um, that's you a don't have play. to look pretty. You don't have to look no. smooth. And that's a, that's a tough play. Uh, balls in the sun hit on a line. It might be knuckling. I don't know. Um, but right behind you, you know, you, you, you've been there before. We weren't very good outfielders, but when the balls hit right behind you, you're like looking every which way at it and, and made the catch though. That's, that's, that's where it comes down to. On another hand, I'd prefer he doesn't throw the ball straight to the pitcher's mound. And that's uh, just just like jokes aside, I understand what happened. You know, he came up, he came up throwing. He wanted to come to home plate. I think we saw the bobble a little bit, and he ended up trying to throw to second base instead. Um, that's just a young rookie error. That's a that's a rookie mistake. I know he's not a rookie anymore. Um, that's unexcusable. Just- unexcusable, well, yeah, unexcusable major league error. You look at it, yes. and you you look at it. It's an it's an error that gets made in in a single A and double A, something like that. Probably not a triple A. Um, that's, a that's an error. I was being, I was being generous. It was, it's yeah. a, it's a low A mistake. That's a, um, that's a, that's a college mistake. Maybe like, honestly, well, in college, if that, if that mistake is made, like you're probably not playing the next day, honestly, because that is something college coaches stress all the time is uh, when we bottle it, you don't, you're not going to have a play at the plate. You got to throw it to second. Yeah. And so and it's it, just, it's just the baseball knowledge. Yeah. You know, it's the IQ of baseball mm-hmm. that's, you know, trying to catch up with his athletic ability. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and this is exactly where we're at with Jordan Adams, too, in a sense. It's like these guys didn't play <clears throat> baseball full time until getting into the major leagues. There's still this learning process with with baseball, which is super weird to say, because like you and I look at it. And it's like this game is so easy to play when you're watching it, you know. When, when you're playing, when you're watching it, it is a very easy game to play. Um, and, and to coach, coaching is an easy game to play. You can coach it very easily. You know, I get, at the end of the day, it's a very easy game to coach. It's when you get on the field, you know, that, that's, that's a little bit different, but, uh, but yeah, you know, we've all been there before and I'm not going to, I don't want to compare it to like slow pitch softball, but there have been times where I do the same thing and it's like, dude, I've just haven't played, I haven't played the outfield in a while. So I'm just going to come up gun and go into home plate. And that's, you know, he's playing, but he's playing every day. He's playing every day. He needs to. He needs to know. He's playing at the professional level. Yes. This ain't slow pitch softball. This yes. isn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Stop yes. trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm sorry. I, I'm going to give I'm, him the benefit of the doubt, dude. Like I'm. I. I he, he, he's number. One, he was the number one of the number one prospects. Not number one. He was a top five prospect in baseball. I get it. I get it. The We've baseball, seen the top baseball. five prospects not make it and not be good at the baseball before. So mm-hmm. I am not going to say I'm worried. Okay. That is not why I am upset with you trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. I am upset with you for giving him the benefit of the, of the doubt defensively when we have been talking about his defense since, since he's been drafted. Like, this is the thing that it's like every single time. Offensively, he's pressing at the plate. Honestly, I think yes. he wants – he knows he needs to get going. He needs a hot start. He's back, to 20, he's back to 2020 offensively. Like, that's yeah. what it looks like to me. It's like he's pressing. He wants to get hits. It's like, dude, go to, to your 20, go to your 2021 20, approach where you're taking more pitches. You know, it's honestly like – and I'll let you get going. It's the, 
<laughs> it's the Brandon Wood approach. Like I always, as a young kid, you always, I always made fun of Brandon Wood because it was three pitches and a strikeout. You knew that he was going to look at a fastball down the middle. You knew that he was going to foul off the pitch. And then you knew he was going to swing at a slider because that's just how, how it is. And that's kind of where Joe Adele is right now. The approach not is not there. The fastball. They're no, just they're not. Three it's three sliders. They say, Thank you. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's the problem is the, the plate discipline. I think he's, he's pressing at the plate. He knows I need to start going early because you know we already have Taylor Ward who's going to start when he gets back we already have Brandon Marsh who I'm competing with and there's no shot I'm taking a job from Mike Trout so there's two outfield spots there's three guys trying to compete you can even throw Jose Rojas in there four four guys trying to compete for two spots Uh, I'm just saying that mentally you could throw four guys in there Um, and, and I think he's pressing I think he's chasing a lot of pitches out of the zone and he needs to get back to that right center approach and just kind of relax and I, I really do think that the hit that was taken away from him really, really cost him. And, yeah. and I, you know me, I'm not the biggest Joe Adele supporter, but I am not worried about him offensively. I think uh-huh. he will be fine. Uh, defensively, I am beyond scared. I, I'm worried that it, it could be worse than Justin Upton in left field, and I'm beyond scared defensively. I, I'm more so worried about, like, he needs to play an actual position, if that makes sense. Like, you either need to put him in left, you either need to put him in right, you know, because those are – we've talked about this before in Angel Stadium. For many reasons, it's not an easy place to play. Uh, I, I don't know if it's the changing in colors of the background. I, I don't know if, you know, you lose the ball easily off the bat. I have no clue, but I can guarantee you that, you know, I, I know it's not a weird outfield, but it's not a fun outfield to play um, by any means out there. So, yeah, yeah. Um, at the end of the day, not worried about Joe Adele offensively. Defensively, maybe some stuff to worry about. Mentally, there is stuff to worry about, I think. Um, that you, you can tell right away mentally what's going on. Um, physically, I, I, I'm not worried. Um, but mentally, I, I do agree there that there is, that there is a little some, there's a little more to be seen from him. So Sad, Sadly, they're in that awkward stage where it's like, well, we're trying to compete to be a playoff team, but we also need to have Joe Adele play every day. And they, they got to kind of find that balance of, do we let him continue to play until he's out of this slump? Or do we find somebody else who's going to play better than him and possibly ruin his entire career? Well, would, well here, I mean, the question comes down to it now. Would you rather see Justin Upton right now or would you rather see Joe Adele? I mean, I, I told you off the record when Justin Upton was cut, you were going to have people complaining that we need Justin Upton. Yeah. And we're, we've only been four games in. I thought it was going to take at least a month before this happened. We're four games in and people are asking where Justin Upton's at. Yeah. That's not a good start for the Angels. I'm not worried. Again, I don't know how many times I can say this. I'm not worried about Joe Dell offensively. Uh, I'm really not worried about the Angels – uh, because I said they'd be 82 and 80. So they're on pace. Hard to be worried when they're on pace. Yeah, hard to be worried for you. I, I said, I mean, 95 wins here is going to be a, is going to be a tough one to, uh, to get. You to. should start to worry just a little bit. I'm not worried. I'm not worried at all about this team. I thought well, about I said, the 95, I, you should worry just a little bit. Well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But, uh, but back onto it here before we let everybody go. I don't know if you have anything else to talk about this first series again. I, I thought, I thought the angels played, I thought the Angels played well minus second game of the second game game of the year, um, and a couple you know blips in in the games, a couple bumps in the road. Um, I, I thought that Joe Madden could have been better. I thought that you know certain aspects of the Angels could could have been better. I thought you know again bullpen management might have been a little bit better. I thought the Angels starters could maybe have gotten deeper into games, maybe not. I, I, I don't know. It's tough to tell. Um, but when you play the defending AL champs on the first series of the season. Yeah. They were in the world series last year, weren't they? Yep. Yeah. It's not, it's not an easy thing. So um, like I said, I thought they went toe to toe with them. I thought they played very well. So Nate, you got anything before we, uh, before we bounce out of here? No, this, this upcoming series, I know we're, we're on a little bit before game one, but this is an exciting series. Miami, Miami has not been to Angel Stadium, if I'm correct. I think Florida has been to Angel Stadium, but I don't believe Miami has been to Miami Angel Stadium. Miami has. Yes. Yeah, because I wore a I wore oh, Giancarlo a. Oh, Carlos Stanton was here a couple of years ago. That's I wore a right. Jose. It was right after Fernandez because yes. I wore a Jose Joe Fernandez Giancarlo. hat. Yeah. But um, so it's been a while. But it's still been a while since the Miami Marlins have been here. Uh, Jazz Chisholm is going to be really, really fun to watch. The Marlins have some fun, interesting pieces. 
Uh, we won't get to see some of the starting pitchers we wanted to, but it's still going to be a very fun series. So excited for this upcoming two game set. Absolutely. Yeah. It'll be a lot of fun. And, uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll see where it goes from there. So uh, Nate, if you don't have anything else, let's just let them all go. Uh, guys, again, thank you so much for listening to this podcast here, talking halos and making us the best angels podcast out there. I really do believe it. Uh, absolutely going to have a lot of fun. Look out for a, uh, a random vlog for us. We're going to kind of be working on that, seeing how that's going. It could happen. It could ha- not happen. I don't know. Just a little, you know, pre <laughs> prequel for that. I-, I have no idea what we got going on. I'm going to let you know. Um, again, hit me up. If you guys want to uh, maybe help, help us out here at talking halo is more than happy to dial uh, to uh, you know, help anybody's future and career in the marketing industry. Um, I'm going to throw that out there right now. Uh, yeah. You know, subscribe wherever you're listening to this. You can follow myself on Twitter, Jared underscore Tim's. You can follow Nate at Nate green 34 and guys, thank you so much for listening. Have a great rest of your day. <laughs>